Okay. Hi kids, welcome back to another pizza party. I'm Mrs. Pizza, and this is a reading vlog. All right, so I did this a while ago, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So I'm gonna do it again. In case you didn't know, in case you've never been here before, hi, welcome. How's life? How's your mom? Good. I am obsessed with my dogs. <laughs> One of them has decided to dig behind me right now. Just digging. That one is named Cheese. Winnie is behind the camera right now. She's our current cinematographer, but I'm obsessed with them and I am not ashamed of it. Do I want to know what you're doing? I had a lot of fun last time I did this. Let's do this again. I am going to let my dogs pick what I read this week. I decided for my first pick, we're going to let Miss Winnie go first because, you know, she's the oldest. So she has seniority in this situation. Also, she's my good girl and she'll sit and wait while she's just like runs amok around me. But I picked two books off my shelf that I know absolutely zero, zero about. And so I have no want to pick them up. So I thought this is a good, this is a good way to make me read them. The first book, this I believe is YA and I got this from my Illumicrate subscription, but it is an absolutely stunning book that I know nothing about. It is Song of Silver. Of silver flame like night. Nothing. I know nothing. I'm assuming them, there's some sort of dragon or mythological creatures involved in this, but I literally know nothing about this. So we're going to see if Winnie picks this one or if she decides to pick The Sun and the Void. Again, absolutely stunning. Like, look at those end pages. That's not what those are. <laughs> those are edges. These are end pages. I don't know what this is about. <laughs> I assume this is another YA. That's it. They're pretty books and I have not felt the need to pick them up because I don't know anything about them. They just show up at my door and I go, God, that is gorgeous. Then I put it on my shelf and I don't read it. So let's see which one Winnie decides to pick for us. All right, Winnie. Winnie did a great job. And Winnie decided to pick this book. So let's pick this one up. And when I'm 100 pages in, I'll tell you what it's about. <laughs> Are you eating bugs? Please don't be eating bugs. Okay, I have gotten to the 100 page mark in a, <laughs> no, no, no A. I have gotten to the 100 page mark of Song of Silver Flame Like Night, which for some reason I always, every time I start to say this title, I start to just move all the letters around. Here's what I will say about this. In these first 100 pages, we get the story of Lan, she is a young woman living in a conquered land. I believe it is 12 years prior to the opening of this story. The empire that she lives in is conquered by a rival empire. They come in, they kick ass, and then they colonize. So she is now living under the rule, as is every other citizen, of this power that comes from another land. She has a secret past that she is kind of only slightly aware of. She's trying to find out the secrets for herself, honestly, but she has a mark that only she can see and she knows it has something to do with the day that the colonizers came and kind of life as she knew it ended. There is also the point of view of Zen, is that his name? 
Yes, there's also the point of view of Zen, and he is a magical practitioner from a very secretive, thought, extinct order of magic users from this same land. Now, here's what I'll say about this. It took about 40 pages of what felt like exposition dump to get into the story. A few little things happened. I know that this is a fantasy story. I know that we have to give us some kind of background of the land. And sometimes when you start a fantasy story, it always feels like there's an exposition dump. But this really felt like there was an exposition dump. And I don't know how much of this information we actually need. It feels like they're giving us a history lesson on this land. And although I'm sure the writer felt that was very important for us to know what's happened in the past 500 years or 10,000 years. I don't even know the number, but I don't necessarily think it's important for us to go that far back in the history, at least at first. It actually opens with, it's labeled as a chronologically or chron, chrono, chronologically, chron, chronology, chronology it would help if I could read, but basically it gives us like a timeline of all of the different governments that have been in power of this land up until present day where they are now under the rule of this foreign power. I feel like that would have been enough, but instead all of this is rehashed in the beginning of the story and it just kind of felt, I'm going to say unnecessary. I don't know if it ends up being unnecessary, but in the beginning of the story, I, I felt like we were not getting into the action because we were exposition dumping. That being said, when some action started happening, that's when my interest for this story got up. There's two different kinds of magics in this world. There is the magic of the native people in this land, the ones that have been conquered. And there is, is from what I've gotten so far, associated with chi and energies and balance. The other form of magic that we have been introduced to is that of the conquerors, which is having to do with metals and utilizing metals to do different magical things. So there's two very different kinds of magic happening in this world as well. I think that if this keeps up being exposition dump, expo there's a, that might be the loudest car I've ever heard in my entire life. That person obviously needs attention. If this keeps up being like big dumps of exposition and then action, 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 and then big dumps, dumps of exposition, I think this is going to be a little bit of a slog to get through. When the action is happening, I'm really enjoying it and got kind of wrapped up in it. And then I felt the pace slowing down again. And I'm a little worried that we're going <laughs> to, we're going to get a lot of exposition dump. I hope not. I hope that they just needed to get it out of their system in the first bit. It was just something we needed to get through so that we knew the history of this land. But so far, there hasn't been that much action. When the action happened, it was actually action, but it took us a long time to get to really anything, not even action, just kind of anything happening. But I've got some time today to get some reading in. So maybe I can put a dent in this beautiful bad boy right here. Let's, let's see. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so this is not going so well. This is, this is not going so well. <laughs> I am just really struggling to pick this up. And honestly, I read for, I felt like ages last night and I'm pretty sure I only got like to here. Like I have, I have so much more book and I don't want to read any more book. This isn't a bad Jeez, I didn't mean to throw it. This isn't a bad book. It's a beautiful book. But I feel like the problem with this book is it's moving really, really slow. I know that there's moments when we need to take time to do some exposition, take a breather in between moments of action to kind of like, everybody take a moment, catch up. Are we ready? Pause. Okay, moving on to the next. We don't need breakneck speed in every single book, but this kind of feels like a slog to me. And every time someone starts exposition dumping, I feel like I start drifting and I have to keep rereading pages because I'm getting really bored. I think that there are going to be people out there that absolutely love this and I'm happy for them, but not every book is for every person. And so unfortunately I'm putting this book down. <laughs> Life's too short to read books you're not interested in. So unfortunately, Winnie's pick did not go so well, but that means that we are going to put two more books up and we're gonna do some picking and we're gonna see what I'm gonna read instead. How about that? Let's pick something else to read. Winnie, do you wanna pick? We'll see, let's just see. I think it's technically Cheese's turn, but she is at an 11 right now, so I don't know if I could even get her to pick a book. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so Winnie decided to pick for us again. Thank you, Winnie, currently licking my hand. And she went with a prayer for the crown chai. This is the sequel to a psalm for the wild built. I'm on a Becky Chambers roll right now, and I'm a big fan. So we're going to try this one out. I pitted two teeny tiny books against each other, so I might be able to read both of them. But this, I have high hopes. I have great expectations. This is going to go well. Right, weenie? Guess who finished a book? Although it's not a very big book. I finished one. So Winnie's second pick, obviously, went a heck of a whole lot better. I did set her up for success, seeing as how I picked a book from, well, each book was from an author that I have greatly enjoyed in the past. So this is the second book in the Monk and Robot series. The first book, where is she at? I'm staring right at it. The first book is A Psalm for the Wild Built. I can't really tell you what the second one is about, but I can tell you what the first one is about and kind of where the second one goes from there. This is the story of Sibling Dex, who is a monk. They are a tea monk and they travel from small town to small town offering tea and a listening ear to people who need it. Well, Sibling Dex isn't feeling the most fulfilled with their job slash life anymore. And one day, they just kind of go rogue. They just kind of just go off into the woods. And when they're out in the wilderness, deep in this wilderness, they find the first robot that humans have encountered in centuries. Because previous to this, during a time in civilizations where robots were used for the majority of labor, one day they gained consciousness and then they said, you know what, we're out of here. And they left and no humans have seen them since. So Sibling Dex has encountered the first robot in centuries. And this robot is just the most adorable stinking thing you've ever <laughs> you've ever read about. His name is Moss Cap, and I adore I adore Moss Cap. At the end of the first book, these two characters have become friends and decided to go on this little adventure together. And here they are going on their little adventure. This, similar to the first book, is cozy and sweet. I really feel like the best way I can describe these books is it's like being wrapped up in the fluffiest blanket, looking up at the stars and telling stories. It's just deep conversations that never bog you down. What is life? What is the meaning of life? All the different versions of the meaning of life but in this like cozy and lovely world and setting with all these lovely people <laughs> and a robot this this was the beginning of their journey together this is their friendship becoming even deeper this is them asking this questions about life and I really really enjoyed this I'm pretty sure at this point I would read anything that Becky Chambers puts out there because it's going to make me feel good when I'm done so Next up, we are going to have Miss Cheese choose a book for us. And I'm, st I'm feeling my fantasy. I have a lot of really kind of chunky fantasy boys just hanging out on my shelf. And I need to start working through some of them. So let's have Cheese pick out a book for us. I'm going to have her pick between two books. First book is going to be City of Brass, and this is by S.A. Chakaborty. I have heard about this series a million times, but yet really don't know much about it. It's on my TBR shelf because everybody who's ever talked about it said, you'll love this. It's so good. You'll love this series. So I bought it and I haven't touched it. <laughs> All I know about it is, is there, there's a woman who is a con woman and she might be more than she seems and somehow she accidentally summons a djinn and then gets sucked into another world. That's it. That, that's about the gist of what I know. The other book 
that she can choose between is The Shadow of the Gods. And this is by John Gwynn. I have started and I continued on with the Malice series by the same author. But this is supposed to be a Norse inspired mythology. I mean, look, that's a little tiny man or woman person. That's a little tiny human right there next to this giant dragon thing. I don't, this looks amazing. And I literally know nothing other than it is multi POV Norse inspired. And one of our points of view, I think is like a mother it says a Norse inspired epic of blood and vengeance. Sounds fun. So let's see which one she's decides I'm going to read today. Choices. Oh, you stink. Cheese has made her choice. And we will be reading City of Brass. Good choice, Cheesy. And I will give you a better synopsis once I've gotten a little while into this. All right, she's been doing some reading. Also, don't judge that the bed is not made. There are, there are two dogs who are comfortably passed out on this bed right now. And their comfort bit comes before aesthetics. So as soon as they get up, I will make the bed. But we are here to talk about the fact that I am almost 200 pages into City of Brass. And so now I can give you a better summary of what this book is about. This is the story of Nahri. She is a little bit of a con woman. She lives in Cairo and has to has had to scrape by since she was a very small child. She was alone in the world in a big city and had to make her way. So she has done so by, in the past, picking pockets and conning people out of money. But now she actually works as a healer. She has the ability to tell when someone is going to be sick and has a little bit of healing abilities as well, but most of the time she's just running a con. She's just trying to make ends meet. She's hustling. Girl has got, she's got to get money so she can eat, so she can live. She's all by herself. And so far she's become very scrappy street smart in the process. One other thing you should know about her is that she doesn't believe in magic. Shouldn't believe in it. It's nonsense. But a lot of the people that live around her, her community, do believe in magic. And so one day, she, kind of trying to make some money, decides to participate in a, I'm going to call it like a, it's almost like an exorcism. It's a, it's a, it's a ceremony that is done to exorcise demons from people's bodies. Well, she shouldn't have done it. <laughs> shouldn't have done it. She just shouldn't have done it. And she gets sucked into this whole world that she didn't even know existed. And she actually might turn out to be more than she thought she was as well. So she gets sucked up into this whole world she didn't know existed, full of djinn and demons and other ancient magical creatures and other magical worlds. One of the other point of views that we have going on is Ali, and he may or may not live in one of these magical worlds. He lives in the kingdom of Devabad, the legendary city of brass. So he is a prince, and he is one of our points of view, and we are getting the point of view, well, I think we're getting his point of view so that we can get an understanding of the politics of this world, of the city, because not everybody is being treated equally, not everybody is being cared for equally, there's a lot of poverty, there's a lot of persecution, there's a lot of racism that is happening in this world, in this giant city full of the magical. This I have been enjoying the absolute crap out of. And here's what I'll say. Having started this 
this whole vlog with a book that was just exposition dump and didn't feel like there was any action. This is also a fantasy world that I have never visited before. And even though we are getting exposition, I am getting explanations about the world, about its politics, about who is who and in the hierarchy of this world and what everybody's magic are, who's the bad guys, who's the good guys. Are there bad guys? Are there good guys? This has done it in a way that has kept me engaged the entire time. We are also getting a lot of action in this. This is a politically driven fantasy. This is the kind of fantasy that I feel like when you are getting exposition, you don't even realize it because you're still so stinking entertained is how I'll put it. I'm really enjoying this and I may or may not have already added the next two books to my shopping cart online. I haven't pulled the trigger yet. I need to. I don't know why I haven't. I'm just delaying the inevitable at this point because there's other books in that cart that I know I want to read. I have too many books and yet I keep buying. It never ends. But it is about a million degrees outside today. I know I'm wearing a sweatshirt, but I'm inside. I'm an indoor cat. The temperature in here is fine for me to be wearing a sweatshirt outside. Not so much. We are in Satan's butt crack once again. It's way too hot outside to the point where the dogs don't even want to be outside. They want to be in my bed, passed out. So that's where they are. But I will check back in with you when I finish this book. Hopefully it keeps going as good as it has. I've been really stinking enjoying this. It might have taken me a minute because life got busy, but I have finished a book. And final thoughts, I absolutely loved this. For all, for everyone, for all of you out there that read this and were thinking, why did it take you so long to read this? We all read this forever ago. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I was missing out for so long. It is my fault and I'm the only one that suffered. <laughs> this was so good. I feel like you are someone that enjoys a politically, the bird is legitimately screaming right now. If you are someone that enjoys politically driven fantasy, this fits the bill. I also will say in this book, and I absolutely loved this, we have two main points of view, so I'm going to call them both our main characters, although one is much more of a main character than the other, but neither one is dumb. Neither one is, I'm not even going to say naive. They're, they're worldly in their own way, but not educated in all the ways of the world like any person would be. They have their own lives that they have lived, and so they are making the best decisions that they think they can make, and you understand every single decision. No one is being stupid. Everyone's trying their best. In this story, we're where everyone has an ulterior motive. Everyone thinks that they are doing the right thing. Everyone thinks that they are the good guy and that they know who the bad guy is. But there's so many moving parts. There's so many people that have prejudices against other groups and see them as lesser. They see themselves as persecuted, but not seeing persecution in others. This is just very well crafted and I loved it and I loved it and I loved it. That's two out of the three choices that were picked by my precious little furry babies that were successes. The first one was a flop, but that's okay. Sometimes, you know, randomly picking based on treats slash squeaky toys doesn't always work out. Not every book's gonna win. But that kids it was another fun ride. If you had fun hanging out with me and the dogs, please subscribe. I hope you're reading good books out there wherever you are and I'll see you next time. <laughs>